In this video, we'll be talking about the Geiger Marston Rutherford experiment and how it led to the discovery that the atom has a nucleus. Uh, and I put this meme right here, this will make more sense after we're done. So let's start off by just putting ourselves in the mindset of scientists at the time. So in the 1890s, for example, late 1890s, we're looking at, okay, well, they knew that there was uh, this thing called an electron, and they knew that it was very small, it was negative, and that's because of the charge to mass ratio. So they developed this thing, <laughs> Thompson and others uh, developed this model. It's been nicknamed the plum pudding model. And what they what they knew, keep in mind, it may sound ridiculous now, but all these things sound ridiculous when you know what the answer is or when you go kind of better, but this is the best that they knew at the time. And it was reasonable based on what they experienced and what they observed. So for example, they knew that the atom had to be overall positive. Um, so that's why I've just tried to draw like this would be like some sort of pudding here. And then it has these small little electrons uh, dotted around it. That's how they thought it might be explained. Okay, so plum pudding model means the entire, imagine just like a blob of positive with little dots of negative sort of dotted around and equally dispersed. So the idea was if they would fire alpha particles around uh, at it, and remember what an alpha is? An alpha is, remember, it's a helium-4 atom. Okay, so it's helium-4. So that means it's the second, uh, so it's got an um, atomic number of 2, and it's got a mass number of 4. So this is helium-4 is what an alpha really is. They expected then, they knew that alphas were positive, so they expected, hey, if they sent these positive particles through, then they should be, you know, on average at least, if these are all equally uh, dispersed, on average then these particles should go right through. Because, you know, they, they should, you know, yes, they're attracted a little bit left, but they're attracted a little bit right. They fully expected alpha particles to go right through. Okay, so this was the idea. That's because the charge is evenly distributed. So on average, they go straight. Let's look at a little animation. I really like this one. It's, again, from PHET. They do such a good job with this. Okay, so PHET, they're great. So let's just look at this. So this is what they expected with this plum pudding model. Uh, again, so this is all positives with little negatives in here. And if you fired alpha particles at them, so this here is like a zoomed in version, you'd expect the alpha particles to go through undeflected. So their experiment was to fire exactly this, alpha particles at a thin, thin sheet of gold. So that was the idea, very, very, very thin sheet of gold. And these are you know, fairly massive particles like this right here. So they expected fully the them to just go right through. All right, well, let's see what actually happened. Well, when they did this experiment, okay, so again, this is 1909, they fired these alpha particles at gold foil. So let's again remind ourselves what are alphas uh, and what's gold. So alpha, remember, is a helium-4. I'm just trying to remind you this over and over again so you get annoyed at me, but that's good. Uh, what's gold, by the way? Gold is called, well, we call it AU, and it's got uh, number 79 here and 197. Remember what those numbers mean. 79 tells you the number of protons. 197 tells you the number of nucleons. So that means 197 minus uh, 79. What's that? 118. That's the number of neutrons. Okay, so this right here is what we're looking at here. So this is gold, and we've got an alpha particle. So they again, again, just to remind you, they expected if the atom is a plum pudding, so to speak, the alpha should go right through undeflected like I just showed you. Let's see what really happened. Okay, so most did go right through. That's true. So most do go through, but many were actually deflected. They were bent one way or the other. Some even came right back at each other, and that was quite ridiculous. They did not expect that. That's why I go back to this one right here. <laughs> okay, so this is why when alpha particle bounced off a of foil, that's, you know, like firing a gun at a tiny little piece of paper, and it's like the bullet actually, you know, comes back at you somehow. So this was not in any way expected, and I think that's what's uh, awesome. So let me show you again what this animation looks like. So this time we do the Rutherford atom. This is what they figured out. Let's look at this here and see, all right, this is really what was happening. They're firing these particles here. I'll do traces. So these particles, yes, most of them do go through, but you notice some of them do get deflected. Some of them actually were bending. In fact, if you look carefully, some of them will nearly come back. I mean, it depends on how many fire and how long you wait, but some of them would actually turn around and come right back. And the only way that that could be was if, well, they knew these alpha particles are positive. The only way they could be deflected, and especially coming right back, must be if there's something positive in the center, sure, but it's mostly empty space.
So this is one of the great examples of you know an experiment that shows that our understanding was wrong, it needs to be updated, and that's great. That's what we love when that happens. So this right here is the conclusion, right? The conclusion is the atom is mostly empty space. That's because the undeflected alpha is sure. But it must have um, a central hard nucleus that is positive, and the rest of it is just mostly empty space. So that's what they concluded from there. So the Geiger, Marston, Rutherford experiment, it provides evidence for the nucleus.